The purpose of Wealth Talk is to educate, inform, and hopefully entertain you on the subject of building your wealth. Wealth Builders recommends you should always take independent financial, tax, or legal advice before making any decisions around your finances. Welcome to episode 112 of Wealth Talk. My name is Christian Rodwell, the membership director for Wealth Builders, and I'm joined today by our founder, Mr. Kevin Whelan. Hi, Kevin. Hi, Chris. Good to be with you again, as always. I know. And we're racing through the month of June. And uh, of course, this is our big Academy launch month. So today we are revisiting and pulling out just an excerpt of our Academy launch webinar that we held at the start of the month on the 3rd of June, because we've had a lot of people saying that they missed it. And, you know, we're all busy. So we thought, well, let's uh, leverage time. Let's repurpose it and uh, share some of that in today's episode. And uh, we're only seven days away from the launch offer finishing, which is the 30th of June. So we're currently running a £500 discount for anyone that would like to join us. And uh, Kevin, we're just delighted at the the new members that have been joining and, uh, you know, enjoying doing the induction calls over the last few weeks and seeing everyone, you know, joining the community. Well, look, I'm so delighted that the pace is picking up. You know, we keep the um, the academy as renamed, but we're keeping it very accessible. We're building in incredible new content now, and we're on a mission, at least I am, to build a huge uh, preferred partner list who outstanding people in their field just bringing great value discounts or bonuses exclusively for Wealth Builder clients and members. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to push on that front. So I think the membership program now, it's it's a kind of fully formed, um, is now ready to just bolt on so many extra benefits. So now's the best time ever. 500 quid off, crumbs. You know, I'd, it's not a bad deal. No, it's not bad. And, uh, you know, the the excerpt we've, we've pulled out today is, is around about an hour long. So we're not going to say anything too much afterwards. And uh, we'll just point people now to um, a Q&A session that we are doing on the 30th. So Wednesday, the 30th of June at 7.30 p.m., just to really answer any final questions that people might have they're not sure, or perhaps to bring a partner along and actually just see us face to face and see that hopefully we're the real deal, Kevin, and we're here to help. The real deal indeed. What time is that? 7.30 p.m. Okay, perfect. I'm looking for, I better be there then. (laughs) Better put it in your diary. Yeah, okay. All right, let's uh, let's head on over to the replay of the Academy launch webinar. Historically, you know, I've focused much more on, you know, giving guidance and mentorship to others. But what started me off, which is really powerful, don't worry about the photographs, but just so you know where I'm from, is a little of my roots here. And I'm proud of that. So I grew up in Newcastle upon Tyne. That's the Tyne Bridge. I love those bridges. They're just such a, a beautiful mixture of art and science. And wealth is just the same thing, really. And we are going to teach you how to bridge a gap between where you are now and where you want to be. Um, anyway, my reason why was related to the oil rig. So my dad started life on the shipyards in Newcastle, building ships as a welder. He then created a business. We're very proud of that. He created a business which was kind of arranging um, when the oil rigs and the North Sea was burgeoning. He got a job there working as a contractor with BP and then started getting other people who were welders and and inspectors and all sorts of other things in that area to work for him as an agent. And he did very well until he died. And he died, unfortunately, at age 46. Uh, And the point about that is I set a personal milestone because we were genetic peas in a pod for sure, to be completely financially independent by 45. And that's what I did. Um, So I focused all of my time, energy on that. And my path was slow because I did it by trial and error. There were no, as as, um, Chris said before, it can be quite isolated. You have anybody you talk to. I didn't have a guide or a mentor and uh, just started to mentor other people myself once I'd achieved independence. And now we know, since we've been teaching this, that instead of waiting about 15 years, which it took me, you can do it in five years. And now we can mentor people with the community and the help of Chris and the coaches. We can get people to be completely financially independent in five years. And most people never, ever make it. They can be working for 40 years and still not be financially independent. We know that's true from the macroeconomics. But uh, I would say 
that, you know, the lesson I've learned is somebody else can help you get there faster, safer, and more enjoyably. And that's our mission to help people do that. Yeah. So there's a little bit of background about us, but why do you want to build wealth? Well, as we said earlier, Kevin and I are speaking to people every day and um, we know some of the common reasons, uh, more time to travel, to just enjoy yourself and, uh, you know, explore the world a little bit. Or perhaps it's to get out of the rat race and to be able to work on your own terms from wherever you choose. And there's Bronwyn, actually, and John. And Bronwyn is one of our wealth coaches. And you may have heard Bronwyn talking on Wealth Talk uh, just a week ago. So uh, Bronwyn will be uh, sharing a little bit later on. And, um, you know, you can see in the background there the elephants because for Bronwyn, freedom of location was one of her highest priorities. So maybe it's meaningful causes. Maybe you want to be financially independent so you don't have to worry and trade your time for money because you have more meaningful things that you want to go out and do and help people. Um, or very often we hear it's to create a lasting legacy, so to really pass on the wisdom to the next generation and beyond. Maybe it's time with your family now, or maybe it's more freedom in later life. So one of those probably will resonate with you. And uh, it all ties into the seven freedoms, um, which we've talked about on a podcast. And uh, it's, it's uh, content that we keep coming back to, Kevin, because we just keep hearing these same things time over time. Yeah, and everybody's got a different one. That's their priority. Uh, Chris, you had a job and you had some of those things that, that a job gives you. But, you know, I know your big passion was location and you spent some time in Lisbon writing your book, Sack Your Boss, and, you know, that was important to you. For me, it's always been control. Um, I'm unemployable, frankly. And I meet many other people who are. And I can't be told what to do, don't like being told what to do. And I was a rubbish employee, uh, but but I'm pretty good at doing what I do by doing things on my terms. And everybody wants a combination of things, but one of those probably drives you more than anything else. And it'd be curious and interesting to see uh, what our audience has to say. Yeah, we'd love to hear which one of those seven freedoms is most important to you. So on screen now, you should see a poll and you can select one option. So which is the most important to you? Okay. Well, I guess no surprise, right, when we're talking about financial independence, that that would be top. But time, second, and control. So I'd say they probably are the top three that we hear most often, Kevin. Yes, and if you've got financial freedom, of course, and this is having multiple streams of recurring income flowing into your bank like a self-replenishing bank account, the money shows up so you don't have to show up. If you've got that financial freedom, then all of the other things will pretty much take care of themselves anyway. The big question, what's been holding you back so far? And we know the things that probably are driving you, all of those freedoms that we just saw, but is lack of knowledge holding you back? Do you feel like you simply haven't got enough information to get going? Or the opposite of that, which is too much information or information overload, which is very common because there's so many conflicting opinions online. You just get bombarded with different ideas and uh it's difficult to know which way to turn sometimes. It can also be difficult to know who to trust. Uh, again, lots of different opinions. And, um, you know, perhaps you're almost at analysis paralysis with too many choices that you do nothing. And another reason might be that you feel you simply haven't got enough starting capital to begin. Perhaps it's fear of making mistakes or, as we've mentioned earlier, you simply don't have a clear plan. And I don't know if there's any points you want to pick up on on those, Kevin. Well, I think a combination of those, really. I think uh, if people have made mistakes before, they definitely fear those and uh, they don't want to look bad. Um, and I think information overload probably seems to, we see overwhelm is probably the biggest reason why people get stuck. And um, the other thing is then, Dealing with opinions and not principles. At Wealth Builders, we teach principles. Uh, we don't give our opinion. We say, this will work. This is a principle. Follow principles, you will build wealth. Follow opinions, you'll go around in circles and end up just like a drifter. Yeah. So we've promised to show you the plan tonight, and we'll come on to that very shortly. And um, 
the Wealth Builders Academy is a, is a structured process. It is a roadmap that we've created and uh, it's tried and tested and uh, it's built on the foundations of quality education, great support and trusted connections. And uh, we're proud to be impartial and holistic. And uh, we'll share with you some more details if you're interested in uh, learning more about the Academy at the end of the webinar tonight. So, um, Kevin, our Declaration of Financial Independence, we've got member Graham Barnett there holding up his signed declaration. Mm -hmm. And uh, here are the key points. And I know this was important to you. You put this together uh, some time ago, and uh, it's still a key part of our membership. Absolutely. And interestingly enough, I'm playing golf next week with Graham, and we're having our mentor session on a golf course, you know, so that's all good fun. But the whole idea behind creating a new declaration of independence and enshrining a set of values was because we wanted to build a community. We had in mind, at least I had in mind at the start, 50,000 people all sharing a common set of values, sharing a common language with a common objective, uh, and, and these are embedded in those. So unimpeachable integrity, building long-term relationships, being willing to help people and be helped in the same way as I described the Time Bridge. The bridge is a, a kind of a monument to, as I say, beauty and, and engineering all at the same time. We want to do the same thing with, with our wealth building. We want one hand extended ahead of us on the bridge, asking for help and having the humility to do that. And another hand extended behind us, being willing to offer that help. And what I've been so thrilled to see is how many of the successful um, members in our program have gone on to become coaches because they want to give back so genuinely, not because they need the money. They don't need the money. Uh, what they're doing is saying, hey, I want to help other people cross that bridge with skill and with care and to ensure that people don't fall off and, and, uh, and so on. And the big one for me, as you know, is the legacy. It's not just what you leave people that counts. It's what you leave within them. And I believe in sharing wisdom, building wisdom, and passing that wisdom on through the process, which isn't in this session today, but is in later sessions in our program called the Family Charter, which is to take these values and extend them to 150 years worth of planning so that you're leaving wisdom for the next generation so they can expand that self-replenishing bank account for the next generation and the generation after that. And we become the pioneers of today to leave the legacy for tomorrow. And that's a really important uh, point to get across from a wealth builder's point of view. Mm. And it, it really is a transformative process. And, uh, you know, we obsess about the transformation of our members. And you'll be hearing from one of our members, Rich Co, tonight, mm. who um, has transformed from uh, uh, being an employee to building wealth and now to being our community support manager as well. And we just love the connection that we have with our members. So, um, you know, just a little bit of, uh, you know, uh, review to back up some of the words that Kevin and I are saying, but, uh, you know, feel free to go to Trustpilot and search for Wealth Builders. Have a look and see what some of our members are writing and uh, sharing about their own experiences. So let's get stuck in and uh, want to begin by just doing a really quick kind of self wealth assessment just for you to get clear on how big the gap is from where you are right now in terms of how much asset income are you generating each month to how much you need in order to be financially secure and then to be financially independent. And the way that we illustrate this is through the five levels of wealth. And uh, Kevin, perhaps you could just give us a, a brief run through of these five levels so everyone understands the, the meaning. Mm -hmm. So wealth is the process of ownership or control of assets that generate recurring income. You know it's recurring because you don't need to do much for the money to keep showing up, as I mentioned earlier on. So if you stopped work, if you stopped that one thing, whether it's in your business, whether it's in your self-employment or your profession as a doctor or a dentist or a, uh, a lawyer, or you're in a job, if you stop, if those things stopped, what level of recurring income would automatically flow. If it's enough to give you everything you need to meet your current expenses, lockdown expenses, let's say, you know, the life in lockdown, you would be financially secure. If it's less than that, in other words, you've got less money that would naturally flow 
automatically coming into your bank account, less money than your expenses, you're financially insecure. And most people who join the Wealth Builder program start there, but not all. Financial independence is a level that says, this is the amount of money that once I think about it would give me the life that I would treasure, a life where I've got no compromises. Whatever I want to do in my life, now, okay, we're not traveling as much as we were before, but nonetheless, when you get back to that normality, what would be your lifestyle? What would you be doing? And what would that level of income be? And for, for, for the most part, Chris, in our community, security is around four to 5,000 and independence is around 10,000. But everybody's number is different and we don't judge that. We don't value that. Abundance is when you have so much money flowing into your life, you're not even spending it. You're simply accumulating more and more and more. And that means, and that's usually what happens once you reach independence, it's an automatic process because you keep generating results from the activities that you've done. Uh, Then it gives you more time for thinking about other things, thinking about causes, creating more value in the world uh, beyond what you're doing personally. And the legacy is the family charter. It's the the idea of creating that long-term legacy and so much money flowing into uh, your, your family life. And we encourage everybody to create a family wealth business. And, uh, you know, everybody creates that and creates a name for the legacy they want to, to leave. And uh, once they name that, then that's the longer term plan. But we don't get too focused on that. We set the name at the beginning and we focus on the charter uh, later on. But either way, yeah, they're the five different levels that uh, we've created and uh, their benchmarks against against which you can assess where you are today. Yeah, so you probably can have a rough idea in your mind where you are today uh, in terms of those levels. And uh, here's a big number, Kevin, but what does this have uh, significance uh, against? Well, anecdotally, because there are no records, but um, certainly all the main protagonists in the world of wealth. And by the way, just one small point. I, I believe we are the only holistic and impartial guide to wealth in the UK. I don't believe anybody is doing things in the same way as we are. But anyway, 95% of the population will never make it to financial independence. They will never reach that level. And they don't do so for all the reasons you mentioned, a lack of plan, lack of trust, overwhelm, fear, um, getting stuck in the trap of the illusion of the one single income source supporting them because it they get caught up in the need to have that income. And then in the end, that income stream always dries up. And when it dries up, they will often realize the devastation of the drop in income that they will have. And more at the top end of the income levels, actually, the more you earn, the weaker the long-term future will be. Because most people who've got high incomes generate high levels of expenses through mortgages and other things. They like to find the things in life. And then when that income stops, the gap is enormous. And that's a tragedy. So why would you want to get out of the 95%? Well, these reasons here that I think we've emphasized partly already, not to be dependent on just earned income and not to have to work until later years when you are left with very little time to enjoy life and just really not being in control. you know, being in a job, never really knowing if that job will still be there tomorrow. And uh, it's definitely more risky and, of course, leads to more financial concern. And those concerns never go away because almost all, everybody who's relying on a single source of income because they're time poor rely on a single source of income for their long-term wealth, which tends to be the stock market. And that's volatile and likely to get increasingly so, as we've seen. Uh, and we measure these things as economists. We measure the volatility of the stock market is getting more and more and more volatile, which means greater insecurity. And when you're old, the last thing you want is the stock market devastation taking away large portions of your income that you're simply too old to get back. And, and this is why most people are working in their 70s now, because they just haven't managed uh, to build up multiple streams. They only have one. Mm. So the question in your head is probably, okay, well, how do I become part of this 5%? So we (laughs) promised you tonight 
that will show you how you can create a clear plan within 60 days to build predictable recurring income from assets. And I've highlighted that part of it, predictable recurring income from assets. So let's focus on exactly what this means. So Kevin, I'll invite you to just share the difference between earned income versus asset income, if anybody is not clear on that. Yeah, sure. Work income or earned income is time traded income. Easy to measure because in simple terms, you can divide your salary uh, by two. And that's roughly what your earned income per hour is. So if you're on 50,000, you're on 25 quid an hour. 100,000 is 50 quid an hour. A million is 500 quid an hour. Essentially, you're always trading time for money. And that's a difficult illusion to break free from. Whereas assets, and there are only seven assets, as we'll discover in a moment, but seven assets that can put money into your life, puts money into your life while you're asleep. You don't have to be doing the work continually for the money to flow. The money shows up. You don't have to show up. And it is permanent. It's not temporary like earned income. Earned income is always temporary. Asset income, if it's done well, is always permanent, which means you can leave a fantastic legacy as well. And there are only seven assets, and we refer to them as pillars. So the seven pillars of wealth. And you can see here, there are three assets or pillars on the right-hand side there, which are home capacity, pensions, and investments. And on the left-hand side, you have property portfolio, business, intellectual property, and joint ventures. So can you spot the difference? So pop in the chat. Um, if you can, if you can see a difference between the left hand side and the right hand side, and we'll see if uh, see what everyone. While people are doing that, let me describe a little of what they mean. So, for the most part, the you can see why we call them pillars because the logo of Wealth Builders is a foundation, a roof, and seven sturdy pillars in the middle. And by the way, I will continue to offer my challenge every time I'm on a webinar that I believe there are only seven assets, they're not eight. Uh, so if you can find an eighth asset, I'd be delighted to send you a very nice case of champagne to acknowledge that, and then I'll build that in to further IP. But most people who are in the 95% have a home they live in, usually not generate any income, have pensions which they can't touch till they're 55 or later, and investments which are invariably also on the stock market. So one source of income, one source of retirement plan, one home that they live in. Those who build wealth more permanently will tend to do so with the property, um, getting multiple streams of income from rental, from business, from recurring income and recurring profits, from intellectual property, from books, um, courses, memberships, and joint ventures becoming a bank and earning interest uh, from there, almost like a bank does now, just getting a, a long-term stream of income flow from the use of their money. Um, and there's a fundamental difference between both sides. It'd be interesting to see what people are spotting, Chris. So what are you, what are you seeing there? Yeah, okay. So Emily's saying the right is mainly the 95%. She's right. Yeah. Dave Brown is saying the right are future incomes, the left are regular incomes. Yeah. Not necessarily the case, but I take the point. Tom is saying left are recurring. And, oh, interesting one from Liz here. The right-hand side is more traditional. Sure. So we actually, we do call those the traditional pillars on the right-hand side and, uh, yeah. and entrepreneurial pillars on the left-hand side. Yeah. There are some other fundamental differences, of course. One of those is your ability to add value on the right is almost always very little. Yes, you can add value to your home, but if you're living in it and not creating a revenue stream from it, you're not adding much value at all. You can't add value to the stock market in pensions and you can't add value to investments either. So you're kind of limited to what a marketplace delivers. On the other side, you've got much more ability and power because you learn how to create value. So on the left-hand side, you become a value creator on the right-hand side, you're just reacting to the value you get. On the left-hand side, you're building steady streams of recurring income. 
on the right-hand side, you're normally accumulating till a later date. You downsize when you're 70. You get your pension when you're 60. You build up your investments until you're later on, and then you try and turn those incomes, those cash flows into income. So you're almost always just simply accumulating. And when you accumulate, you're at the mercy of the market. Whereas if you've got multiple streams of recurring income coming in from many places, uh, you're not dependent on any one market. And of course, you can leverage on the left-hand side. And many of our smarter uh, wealth builder students will take money that they've got on the right-hand side and they will cross it over that bridge, there's that word bridge again, to the left-hand side and use money locked in the capacity in their home, locked in their pensions and locked in their investments. And they'll turn it into instant seed capital, like seeds growing uh, to build other assets that are more permanently generating income. Yeah, so hopefully now we've cleared up exactly what we mean by earned income versus asset income and recurring income, these terms that may be new to you. And um, why don't we hear from one of our members who actually has implemented some of these pillars. And um, Richiko, if you are on the webinar, it would be really wonderful for you to just share a few words of... uh, of these points that we can see on screen here, you know, what was driving you, what was important, and um, and then what was the reason for, for obviously joining Wealth Builders? Thank you, Chris. Hello, everyone. Um, yes, I joined Wealth Builders two years ago, back in May 2018. Um, we found members of the program. I was in a, a very busy job at the time um, in the airline industry, at long hours, lots of travel, which... It sounds very glamorous, but it wasn't. Um, so I was really looking for a way to uh, to escape the rat race, and I um, didn't really know how or where to start. So I came across Wealth Builders, and um, I, knew, I found what I was looking for with teaching the uh, the principles of building wealth. Um, I'd started with a small e-commerce business at the time, um, selling products on Amazon. Um, and then um, when I joined Wealth Builders, I also started in property. I did property, property education and um, that became uh, my secondary pillar to uh, to focus on building my recurring income, which um, at the moment is roughly at about £2,700 a month. It's still at financial security, but creeping up towards the financial security level. And it's completely changed my life. Um, I have quit my airline industry job and I joined Wealth Builders at the start of this year as the community support manager. Um, supporting Chris and and Kevin and all of our members on uh, on this journey. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you for sharing, Rich Co. And um, yeah, you absolutely have embodied the principles and uh, we'll find out a bit more about exactly how that process works in just a short minute. So thanks a lot, Rich Co. Thank you, Chris. So our promise once again tonight is to show you how to create a clear plan within 60 days to build predictable recurring income from assets. So we understand what recurring income from assets are. We know there are only seven assets. So how can you create a clear plan? Well, here is the roadmap or the blueprint, however you wish to refer to it. But this is what we lovingly refer to as the recurring revenue roadmap. And it really is the only way that you can move from a place of financial insecurity, which is point A, through to security and achieve financial independence, which is point B. And um, the journey here is a journey that doesn't happen overnight. It can take, on average, three to seven years. So we say a five-year journey for most people, Kevin, if they're committed, if they have a clear plan and they have good support. Yeah, five years is about the average um the commitment is normally a couple of hours a week you know so if you can do 30 minutes a day you're you you you're really doing well uh, a couple of hours a week to build your wealth and you're starting with some sort of um financial leverage which you'll get to Chris I'm sure in step 5 uh, to talk about uh, so if you've got some something you can bring or time to bring and you've got a commitment so commitment is the start it's not knowing what you need to do at the start. It's just making a commitment. You want to be financially independent. Once you make the commitment, everything else will flow towards that. But you can't know everything before you make the commitment. It's counterintuitive, I know, but you have to make the commitment first. Otherwise, 
you'll constantly be seeking the best, the magic, um, and that will get you back to being under the boardwalk, which is a drifter song, if I remember, Chris. So, you know, or Saturday Night in the Movies, which is another one, isn't it? So just go to the movies if you want to do that to get entertained. This is not meant to be entertaining. It's meant to build wealth. Five years to build wealth is a much better place to be than 40 years to have insecurity for the rest of your life. I'm not sure, but I think I would do it this way. Now I could do it in five. You know, we can teach it in five when it took me three times as long because we've learned all the lessons. We've made all the intellectual shortcuts. We've made all the connections. We've got everything completely nailed. So anyone could follow this. Irrespective of where you're starting in age, in your respective where you're starting with money right now, because there are plans where you can build wealth without having to have money to do it. You just have to give yourself more time. Yeah. And, and Kevin, this is a process you've been teaching for many, many years, but more on a one-to-one basis in a mentoring capacity. And uh, all the IP was inside your, your head. And I've had the privilege of uh, being able to kind of pull that out. And together we've created the roadmap here, which has just made it a lot more simple for mm-hmm you know, everyone to follow. It's really made it accessible. And, um, you know, we can break it down in a moment, but, uh, you know, it's based on, based on, you know, your own experiences. So uh, it's, it's tried and tested. Yeah. And principles, not opinions. As I said earlier on, these things work. It's not an opinion that works. It's not, you should do crypto or gold, or it's not about that. It's about principles of generating recurring income. Yeah. So let's break this down for you. You can see there are three stages. So starting with stage one at the bottom is all about building confidence, because we know that for many people, I know myself included, you know, on my journey, invested lots of money, lots of time, lots of energy, trying many different things in in the beginning. And, uh, you know, some of those things don't work out. And uh, it can be a little bit demotivating. And you look back and you think, I'm not really making progress. And, you know, you're trying, you're trying, you're working hard, you're still not seeing things happen. So we know that building confidence is important and getting that foundation in place and, and it can knock your mindset. But getting really clear on your reason why is a huge catalyst, as, as Kevin shared earlier. And um, of course, we, we use many different tools. Wealth Dynamics is a tool that helps you understand which of the eight entrepreneurial profiles you are. So that all is wrapped up into step one, which is mindset there. So let's have a look at stage one, which is building confidence. So um, once we've covered off, you know, really getting clear on, on you as an individual, what are your strengths and weaknesses? You know, what are your interests? What's driving you and building, uh, driving you to want to build wealth? Then we move into step two, which is just really doing a self-assessment, looking at your life right now, looking at the money that's coming in and going out. And we have a process in step two, which is called debits process. And perhaps we'll share uh, a little bit more. Uh, we have an example in a minute of one of our members who, uh, who made a huge saving just with a few hours work by following that, uh, that, that exercise. And it's all about stage t- uh, step two there, getting really clear on those five levels. So really understanding how much you actually need to be financially secure and how much to be financially independent. And when you actually break it down, sometimes it's not as much as you think. And step three there is a critical step. It's what we call the roof and it's the protection of you and your assets. And it includes really just taking stock of, do you have wills, power of attorneys? Do you understand trusts and uh, home ownership? A few different aspects there, which are things that often, Kevin, people have got on the to-do list, but because it's not one of the most exciting tasks, it kind of gets pushed along. And in some cases, it never gets done. No, and this is true, you know, when I relayed the story of my dad who died at 46, unfortunately, he's a business owner died without a will, died without a power of attorney, died without a business plan, died without a shareholder agreement. So everything went when he went. So you can't leave it till you're wealthy. You build and protect your leaky roof as you go. And while it's never the most pleasant thing to deal with these, it's really important. And all of our members say how, what peace of mind they get when they do it. And they all do it. You know, it's again, it's just something that we like to make sure that you get your roof solid and then when you grow, you build a stronger and stronger roof because you're building a stronger and stronger uh, structure for yourself. So just important to do it, but it's all done within 30 days. So yeah. it doesn't take too long. 
Absolutely. So, um, yeah, you know, once you have your foundation in place, then, um, as, as Kevin said, um, that can take, you know, as little as 30 days, really. And, um, and let's just look at one of the examples there from Adnan. So um, one of the exercises in step two, we, we said debits, Kevin, which is really just kind of looking into, you know, your life for uncovering hidden money that you didn't realize was there. And um, Adnan's story was was, you know, not uncommon, actually, because he's not the only member who has found a significant amount of lost pension money. And uh, you can see there he found £50,000 simply by going through the exercise. And, um, and um, yeah, you know, he's now reinvested that um, into his property to generate more recurring income. So uh, a great result there, Kevin. Yeah, the biggest we found is 100000 that somebody didn't know they had. And the, the largest that uh, somebody sent me a very fine case of red wine because I pressed them and said, come on, let's do it now. Let's sit and do it. Let's do it. Come on, let's do it because you're putting off, you're drifting on this one. And he did, it was £255,000. So it's, it's crazy that people forget things they've left behind, particularly pensions because they're so dull and boring generally. They're a bit grey, aren't they? Um, but by securing that money, and uh, while we won't be talking much about SAS uh, this evening, it's a very powerful tool to take control of that money and walk it across the bridge and use that money to build recurring income instead of just leaving it, languishing on the merry-go-round of the stock market. And that's very, very important strategy that almost all of our successful clients and, and members have gone through. Yeah, so Luke joined at the same time as Adnan and again, went through uh, the process of debits and um, saved over £3,700. And, um, you know, that took, I think, about three hours for Luke just to really just go through everything that was already kind of coming out of his bank accounts and just reassess what he did need, what he didn't need. And it's something we all kind of know that we need to do. And sometimes we do it, sometimes we don't. But um, I think that's the thing about having a structure is we make sure, you know, you get things done, you get your roof done, you do your debits and uh, you check it every year. And um, you can see Luke then has, has used that to help build multiple streams uh, in the property pillar, uh, joint ventures as well. And he's now generating a recurring income of £3,000 per month. And earlier this year, also quit his job. Um, so, you know, we just love hearing Luke's story. He, uh, you know, he's just been a dynamo since he joined. Mm. And uh, the other thing about debits, which is those people who just like to know what they are, we won't go into detail, but it's debt, education, bills, insurance, tax, and support costs. That's the hidden cost that you're not paying attention to, like the fees to IFAs or the fees to financial services or whatever. And almost everybody finds money, the average around about £1,000, but it's money that you find, and when you find it, you plant it. They become seeds for building wealth, wherever you want to do that. And more often than not, we can show people how to get education at a fraction of the price they'd pay elsewhere because we've got such a strong, thriving community and uh, trusted partners that we work with who give our members, uh, you know, significant discounts and some ways, you know, which we won't go into now, you can actually be paid to get education when you know what you're doing. So you're turning your money into a source of income and a source of learning all at the same time, which is a sort of a double ROI, if you know what I mean. Yeah. So you can see just two examples there. It's very possible within the first 30 days to uncover significant amounts of money that you simply didn't realize were there. So that moves into the second stage of the roadmap, which is uh, stage two, all about building knowledge. So once you are, you know, have that foundation in place, it's given you that peace of mind, you know those important things are done, then it's time to really start learning about the seven pillars. And that's step four. So obviously going into detail, uh, around each of those, but then really deciding which ones probably are the most suitable for you, because uh, you certainly won't be focusing on all seven at the same time. And uh, in fact, we would like you to focus on just one or two, and uh, we can help you eliminate the ones that are probably not right for you now, and they may well come into play later on. And uh, once you understand about the seven pillars, then the key to building wealth is step five, and that is leverage. And there's five types of leverage that we teach, and that's financial leverage, obviously looking at your life, where have you got financial leverage? Could be in your home or your pension or investments or your properties. And then intellectual leverage is, is really what you know, but also what you're interested in. So looking at your experiences. 
And relationship leverage is who you know. So have you got a network of like-minded people around you? And uh, are you part of a community uh, that you can learn from? And um, systems is, uh, is another form of leverage. And then the most important at the bottom there, Kevin, is leveraging your time. So making sure that that small amount of time that you are focusing on wealth building is spent on the right activities. Yeah, and you must power through the time, whether it's you know your half an hour a day or it's two hours a week, whatever you've got. You must leverage that time. And that's why we talk about different ways you can box your time, you can leverage your time, you can accelerate your time. You can work with other people to give you more time because other people will bring leverage to your time. But you have to give it some time. If you have zero time, you will build zero wealth. You must give it time. So we need to establish what is the amount of time you've got combined with the other forms of leverage, combined then with your the pillar that most interests you. Then we matrix that out and help you choose the most appropriate pillar and strategy that fits your unique leverage, which means you don't get overwhelmed, you don't get bombarded, you focus on one thing or two, depending, but usually one or two to get you through to the next level, which is when you're aiming towards security. Yeah. So let's hear from one of our other members. And Ivor Bennett is a member who joined us last year actually just about a year ago now and uh Ivor has been on fire since day <laughs> one pretty much uh are you there Ivor hi all hi Kevin Kevin hi Christian hello Ivor so um thanks very much for joining and just uh sharing a few words and I've put some points there just uh you know to emphasize that uh I, I remember you telling me on on the wealth talk interview that you know it was uh you had a bit of a pension shock. You were speaking to someone at work, right? And um, you suddenly thought, wow, if I just continue on this path, uh, it's not going to take me to where I want to get to. So maybe you can share that point with with everyone. Yeah, yeah. It's a, yeah, it's a really good point. And, and I think it's um, you get kind of life-changing events as you go through. Um, and, the, you know, one of the points I had there was my old uh, boss, uh, he worked, um, he had like 30 years worth of pension, two really good pension pots. And I just remember him, getting ready to retire. He, I was sitting at the desk. He looked over and he said, oh, I've just got my pension figure. And it was just like a, it's like a smack in the face. And I just realized that I was just a million miles away off from where I needed to be. Um, and I just continued to, I guess, sleepwalking in, in, into retirement and, and you know, the, look at the, the pension, um, not really attached to it. Um, but I, I really thought just that was one of a, a trigger of events that I really wanted to uh, you know, really kickstart me into the wealth building. I think. Yeah, and then what you know what prompted you to join Wealth Builders? Uh, yeah, well, I think I was overwhelmed. Um, I'd spent uh, so I've only started wealth building um, at the beginning of lockdown, really. So start start day one of lockdown, we we got our first buy to let investment um, at auction, and I think that overwhelm and, uh, and, and media and you know, social media and everything that you can consume, uh, everything can consume me. And, and I had a bit of a plan, but I didn't really know where I was heading. Um, and what I really liked about what I found with listening to Wealth Talk, and I was able to connect with, I felt like I know knew you and Kevin anyway from all the episodes that I'd binged on anyway. And I think when we had our conversation, it was more around, um, you know, I was worried about the time. I said to you, you know, I'm not sure I'm going to have enough time to do property as well as wealth building. And, and our conversation, you just said, well, you know, this time next year, are you going to have any more time? And, and it was quite a, a clean cut answer. I was like, well, no, this is probably the, the, the best time I'm going to get. I wasn't, um, you know, I wasn't tra- traveling into the office. So I made sure I was leveraging my time. And yeah, so that really just cemented that I've got a property strategy and I overlaid that with wealth building. Um, it just kind of all worked hand in hand. And, uh, you know, I've, no, I've not regretted it since uh, since day one of joining. Yeah, and now generating income streams from uh, different sources, so multiple streams now, and um, always love your posts in the Facebook group, and you're always there every month on the Q&A sharing your updates, which we look forward to. And, um, you know, that aspect of community, Ivor, um, you know, would you say that that's been important for you? It's helped you progress a bit faster? Yeah, I think very much so. So I, I, I guess... Um, so my, my wife, um, she's she's there supporting me, but she's not really involved in the in, in the whole wealth building aspect. So I think without the community, it would have actually been really lonely. I guess the 
you know, you get a bit better accountability from posting and the, the groups there. And, and I think everyone goes for ups and downs when you, you're going through this journey. And, and I think, um, you know, you see other people and think hearing the other stories. And that really, for me, was is the catalyst. It, if you're ever feeling down, you see someone that posts that, you know, they've just given up their job or they've just hit their, their financial target. And it's really achievable. And, and I think that the community gives you the mindset because you've got to get over the mindset. And once you have got the plan and the mindset, it's really just about implementation. Um, but I think that's what the community gives you. It, it really just gives you that sense of, uh, of, of well-being and, and that you're not on your own. And you, you can answer a question at any point in time and, um, and, and you do start to connect and, and, and form some really strong relationships as well. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much for sharing, Ivor. Thanks. Okay, so we've looked at stage two there, and um, stage two is all about building knowledge. We know that that can only come following the confidence, which is stage one. So how do you now create a plan within 60 days to build predictable recurring income from assets? Well, at the end of stage two is when we create your one-page wealth plan. And, and this is a new uh, aspect of the academy is, uh, is a new one-page wealth plan here to help you stay super focused on your path. And this will be different for every person, but it's based on the principles, the fundamentals that we've already shown you. And um, this uh, is really the end of the first 60 days is when you'll have your clear plan of which will be your primary, your secondary pillar, your strategy, where's your leverage coming from? What are your financial targets? Really get clear on how big the gap is from where you are to where you want to get to. What's driving you? So all of these things wrapped up together of which you'll have a really good understanding of by this point. And we'll have done your induction call as well, which is a process where you and I would uh, spend an hour on Zoom creating what we call the wealth map. It's a, it's a mind map. It's a really visual, creative process where it's a snapshot of where you are today. And I hand that wealth map over to you and that becomes the foundation then for your one-page wealth plan. And at the uh, end of stage two is when we then assign you with one of our wealth coaches. So every month you have a one-to-one -one coaching call in the academy with your coach and our coaches uh, are on screen here. So um, one of our coaches is actually beaming in live and direct. And uh, Bronwyn, are you there? I am indeed. Hello, everybody. Hello, Bronwyn. So um, I enjoyed our interview on Wealth Talk a week ago. I'm sure uh, a few people on the webinar tonight have heard that. And um, obviously, we were talking about the importance of the freedom of location. So um, it'd be really nice, Bronwyn, if you would share a few words of, you know, how you first connected with Wealth Builders and, and obviously what was your mm. journey that led you to that and, um, and what's happened since then? Sure, I'll be as brief as possible because I know we've got some, so much to share. But um, yeah, my uh, introduction to Wealth Builders was meeting Kevin when I first started um, wanting to learn about property. And this network, once you start getting an education, is a very, very small network. And meeting Kevin opened my eyes up to much more broad opportunities of, of creating wealth, not just property. So my background's banking. I spent 21 years in Lloyds Bank. And uh, whilst the pension didn't look too good, well, actually, it looked all right, uh, to be fair, but I didn't want to carry on working until 67 years of age, which is when I was told I could draw down my pension. And I thought, no, um, I've got way too many things I want to be doing in my life. And um, how can I create a recurring income to allow me to have the freedom to do other things. And, um, and that started with property. It started, um, you know, an education around, is it possible to, to use property to create additional income? And then really, um, it's about understanding the other pillars. And, you know, having been a banker for that long, I thought, well, I, I know quite a lot about finance, but clearly I didn't. <laughs> and, and I think a lot of people don't. You know, we don't teach this stuff through schools. We don't teach it and we don't share it enough. And that's why I'm passionate to, to share my knowledge of what I've learned and uh, hope to, 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 to help other people get to some sort of independence much quicker than I did. 
Um, so that's why I'm, you know, I'm a coach and I've got a lot to share. I've got lots of different pillars that I, I now, um, you know, get, get some good returns from, but also I'm doing what I love. And I'm in Botswana at the moment. Um, I've been volunteering out in Namibia with my husband for five months. And then we're, we're back on the road having some fun and uh, discovering new places in Africa. So whilst I do that, I'm able to continue to get a regular income from my property portfolio and, and also continue to coach and help other people just because technology enables that. So I talked a lot about that on Wealth Talk um, that, that was literally launched last week, wasn't it, that, that particular podcast. So, um, yeah, if anyone wants to hear more, listen to that podcast and connect with me. But that's where I am. Yes. Yeah, well, to be here. Re- Rebecca has just posted awesome. So uh, yeah. enjoying, enjoying that. Awesome indeed. And um, actually, our, our podcast episode that came out yesterday was a member spotlight with Adrian Taylor. And um, you've been mm. Adrian's coach. And um, just yes. maybe we talked about the transformation, transformational process, mm. really, that we see people yeah. move uh, through that roadmap. And, um, you know, what have you noticed as being a coach, Bronwyn, from, you know, when mm. you first have that first induction call with someone to where they are in kind of six, 12 months later. Yeah. So I'm Adrian's coach. I'm also Ivor's coach. So Ivor, who just, who just commented, I'm also his coach. So that's a coincidence um, on today's uh, um, webinar. So yeah, coaching, very, very important to have some sort of accountability, to have a regular monthly look into, you know, did I do what I said I was going to do last month? But also, you know, there might be some issues that um, have arisen and you want um, you want the ability to talk to somebody in confidence, to talk to somebody that has got some experience who can perhaps give you some, some ideas. And yeah, when people start out, they, they're not really sure how, what does coaching do? And what I find is that with different people, I have a different approach and, you know, I think depending on what people really need, um, I will adapt to that. Um, But also knowing the process and knowing the steps, it's a fantastic, um, it's a fantastic process, but sometimes it's the mindset that you need to get back into, into gear. You know, there are, there are ups and downs with this. It's not easy. It takes time. And, when you've got, when you're in that down bit, you need somebody to just lift you up and go, okay, you know, it's okay. You can, you can continue, but equally when you're at the, t- at a good point and you've done really, really well, you want somebody to give you that feedback and, and, you know, to share some of that, that good stuff with. Okay. So, so it varies hugely, but I think coaching is so important that you have that on a regular basis and you commit to that because certainly from my experience when I was learning, knowing that I had a coaching call coming up just gave me that little lift of I better make sure I've done what I said I was going to do, but also prepare for the next session around, well, where are my issues? Where can I get value from that call so that I'm not wasting the time? Um, but yes, it, it certainly is essential, I would suggest, if you want to achieve your goals, to commit to to some sort of regular engagement and coaching. Yeah, well, thanks so much for taking some time out, Bromwyn, from your adventure. And um, we really appreciate it. And obviously, thank, thank you for all the work that you do as, as one of our wealth coaches. No problem. Thanks. And Kevin, just, you know, Maybe you have a word just on some of our other coaches on screen here, but, you know, definitely Chris is uh, another client, similar journey to, uh, to Bronwyn there. Yes. So, you know, Chris um, was engaged with, uh, with me as a guide on a similar journey to Bronwyn really with the banker turned bank, Um, a really great coach and anybody meets him knows the integrity of the guy and how he's so keen to help Carol, who's got, Brilliant property experience as uh, as a mentor with uh, another coaching organization in property. Manish, who's outstanding in the field of investments as an ex, um, you know, city analyst and city broker. We've got Ian, who's got his own story, recently came out as well on the podcast, you know, born out of a similar experience. To me, actually, a tragic death, but not of his father, but of another family member. And, of course, uh, John, who's our most uh, recent addition, who 
you know, um, at the beginning, didn't think he would want to be a coach, but he's just enjoyed the journeys, embraced it so full on. You know, John plays everything full on. And um, when he managed to achieve his own successes, he thought, you know, I want to help people and I want to give back. And and so, again, none of these people are doing it for money. They're not time trading. They're not replacing something with a job. They don't have a job. They do it because they want to do it, because they want to add value. And that can only really come from a place of com- complete confidence and where they are financially. And, uh, you know, we're thrilled John has gone through the process. Richico gone through the process. Bronwyn has gone through the process. And Chris Henry have gone through the process. Others of uh, other coaches didn't go through our process, but have gone through the process with others. So uh, they're great coaches and we're always looking to build more as our membership grows. And I'm sure some of our successful members today will become the coaches of tomorrow and probably more on that in in coming episodes, I think. Mm. So uh, I hope you're now beginning to see how this plan does work and uh, hearing from some of our members and our coaches as to exactly how it works. And um, we've looked at stage one, which was build confidence. We've looked at stage two, which is then a good understanding of the assets and pillars. And um, the final stage now, once you have your plan in place, is to take action. So stage three is all about building assets. This is where you will work with your coach on your specific plan every single month, every 30 days. And your coach will help you to turn the wheel of wealth, which is step seven there, Kevin. And I will pause because this is such a critical step. And uh, maybe you can just say why it's so important. Yes, it's really critical because everybody who has got a different wealth dynamic, will try and do something to accelerate the process. Everybody's hungry for success, but there's a process, and we call it following the wheel. Um, and while we don't have you know, the time to show you every intricacy of it, there are five distinct steps in the wheel. The first is education, knowing enough about the asset to be clear you do know enough. You're not guessing. You're not listening to opinions. You've got facts. You know what you're doing. The second is support, which is that impartial, holistic coaching community. Nobody's pressing you into doing one thing or another. There's no upsell. There's no, oh, you need to go on another course. There's there's none of that taking place. The third is connections. That's bringing the education to life, seeing what other people are doing. So you can just see it and experience it and say, well, what do you actually do physically? And how do I feel about that? Do I see myself doing that? And in many cases, the as you did, Chris, with with one aspect of property, you went through the process and went, this isn't for me. And that's good, though. It's good, although it's frustrating because you don't get to achieve an outcome. The successful turn of the wheel, by the way, is either the flow of cash, i.e. lump sum, or cash flow. It can be either. But nonetheless, the whole process is turning the wheel 360 degrees from, you know, point at 12 o'clock all the way around again. The fourth stage, the most missed stage, is the stage of due diligence, which is, do you understand the risk? How will you mitigate the risk? Can you deal with the downside here? Have you documented the downside? Are you very clear uh, about how you're dealing with that? And only then do you move forward in taking action. And when you take action, which is making sure you've done the whole thing properly, then it should click through to generate a flow of let's say traditionally and more often than not cash flow and then you measure that cash flow in a wealth chart that I'm sure Chris will give an insight into um, where you're recording how your recurring income is growing a bit like a thermometer you know when people used to raise money on blue peter and stuff you see the thermometer rising up and that's what you're doing you're measuring that and recording that and many people get their kids to color it in as they're on the rise and that's great but we mustn't cheat the wheel. And that's the whole concept. Prince, some principles here. Don't cheat the wheel. Uh, make sure you do it properly. That way you won't mistakes. You won't backslide. You won't end up losing confidence and getting to a place where you, you start off with ambition and then you lose money and go backwards, almost like snakes and ladders. We don't want you to do that. And people who follow and focus and don't try and do too many wheels at the same time and therefore half turn the wheels, do it properly, it will work. Mm. 
So there we have the roadmap and uh, we've walked through the three steps. And um, it's really as simple as this, Kevin, that it takes 60 days to create your plan, but it takes 60 months or five years to reach financial independence. And the key is to take that first step. Yeah, and, and we want to emphasize that it's not, it can't be quick because if it was quick, everybody would do it. There would be a magic bullet. There'd be a straight road. And although that looks a straight road ahead, as Bronwyn has alluded to and Ivor has alluded to, it's never straight. You're going to take some deviations and that's part of life. It's actually part of an enjoyable journey that you make mistakes and you 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 go off, your coach gets you back on track, but you need to discover about yourself. So it usually will take about five years. So if you've got the patience, if you've got the commitment, if you've got the courage to trust in a process, because you won't know how to do it yet, but you have to trust. And if you trust and give yourself 60 months and you'll follow a process, you have the humility to do it, not try and think you know everything from day one. We're not about that. This is not for drifters. It's not for DIYers either, who people who think they know everything on their own. It's better done in a community with sharing, with integrity, with people who are there to help you, not to hold you back. We don't get a prize if you get to financial independence. We just get the satisfaction of knowing that you are one of the 5%. And we want 50,000 of you to make it. That's my personal ambition. Before I check out, Chris, before I go under the boardwalk, I want 50,000 people to be financially independent following this plan. And I hope some people tonight will like the sound of it and will put their trust in us. Okay. Hope you enjoyed that. Actually really enjoyed listening back to that as well, Kevin, and uh, certainly hearing from Ivor, from Bronwyn and from Richico as well. Mm, yes. And always good to hear from, from people. And, uh, and of course, just check out our trust pilot reviews. You know, the key values come through time and time and time again there, but look, we're accessible, as I said, at the beginning, and we want to be personally accessible. So tune in to that Q&A session, ask any questions you've got, get your partner to ask any questions. Just, you know, we'll tell it warts and all. We're not trying to, we know it's a, it's kind of like a five-year plan, right? So we're not trying to rush people into a five-minute decision. So just get your questions asked and answered. And if it's good for you, come and join us. If not, just join on the outside and just consume our free stuff and wait for the, the next one to come along. But uh, 500 quid off, that's not a bad one. And a good reason to to tune in, especially now as we reach, you know, we're just turning the corner of the year. We're coming out of lockdown. Lots of opportunities will abound. So hopefully, Chris, you know, we'll we'll get a good attendance there, and we'll be delighted to answer any questions people have about what wealth builders do, what we stand for, and how we can help. Definitely, yeah. So uh, do you know bring bring your partner along? Make sure you join us next week on Wednesday, the 30th of June, 7.30 p.m. We're just having a really informal Zoom call and uh, just come and join us, ask questions and listen and learn and see if it's right for you. And Kevin, you know, partners join free uh, in the academy. So there's no extra cost for partners. We really want to build a, a family wealth business. This is a plan, a legacy for the long term, as you say. So, you know, it's important that everyone comes together. Mm -hmm. I couldn't agree with you more. All right, great. So uh, thanks for listening today. As always, Kevin, we'll catch up same time, same place next week. Mm, Until 30th of June, my friend. See ya. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget that we are constantly updating our resources inside the Wealth Builders membership site to help you create, build and protect your wealth. Head over to wealthbuilders.co.uk slash membership right now for free access. That's wealthbuilders.co.uk slash membership.